So a couple of years back, we did Bread's Bakery, which is this amazing bakery on 16th Street off Union Square that Gotti Pelli created with Uri, his pastry chef. Bakes fresh all day long. So successful, they opened up a second branch on the Upper West Side, which is kind of like his homage to the neighborhood. We're going to visit Bread's Bakery Upper West Side, where they've got a special chocolate cake that's got a great story. Then we're going to come down and spend the rest of the day at Nur, N-U-R, this wonderful restaurant in Gramercy. Brought in a rock star chef, Mia Radani from Tel Aviv, who's killing it. He's got four or five restaurants in Tel Aviv, TV shows. He's coming here, he's doing food like I've really never seen, like Middle Eastern fusion with influences from all around the area. Morocco, Tunisia, Yemen, you name it. Incredible bread program, just wonderfully different food. Not surprisingly, they're packed. So we're gonna spend a day in this kitchen seeing what Meyer does so, so well. I'm Mike Colomeco, Industry Insider. I've been in the business my whole life and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. All of my memories are here. This very spot where we're standing, literally this spot where we are standing right now, was the international newsstand. Gotti Pelig has an eye for talent. A few years back, he convinced the legendary Israeli baker, Ori Schecht, to come to New York and open Bread's Bakery, which became an instant classic. He followed up in 2017, tapping Mir Adani, who runs multiple restaurants in Tel Aviv, to come to New York and open Noor in Gramercy, with a menu that's a celebration of Middle Eastern cuisines. I grew up with a mother who did not like to cook. But my mom figured out when we moved to New York, there's a lot of restaurants. And so we ate out every single night. So again, my mom never baked, never cooked. So for my birthday, she would go to Soutine Bakery, which was two blocks away from us. And the best cake there by a landslide was this Concord cake. What, what do you call it? It's not a cake. I, we call it a Concord cake. OK. The base is a French meringue with um, cocoa powder and powdered sugar. We pipe it out. You can kind of see the swirl. Yep. That's how we pipe it. And it's going to be pretty soft on the inside, I can even show you. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're almost like cookie texture. Yeah. So this place comes to open up. They're going to do an Upper West Side location. Yeah. Because why not? I mean, it's a fungible idea. Everyone loves great pastry. But he wanted to do that one thing, that Concord cake. And then this is where it's like kismet. Mm -hmm. Because you have a connection to the Concord cake, too. Right. So when I was just out of liberal arts school, I decided I wanted to become a cook but I had no experience. Then I found Madge, who was the owner of Soutine at Which the time. I've been here forever, 30 years. 30 something years, yeah. like a staple bakery in the neighborhood. And um, I was very fortunate. So then we have our mousse. This is an Italian meringue with like a chocolate and butter kind of emulsified together. The same meringue as the base, we pipe it in thinner lines. Right. Bake it maybe an extra two minutes, that's it. A little more surface area. Yes. A little you get these nice textures. You have the soft base, which is really easy to bite into. You have your, your chocolate mousse, which is like, it's rich, but it's not so rich that it's like you can't eat the whole thing. <laughs> I bet lots of people would love to eat that whole thing. We do make it pretty, pretty sizable so you could share it. And that was my birthday cake for all of my childhood. It was sticking candles into a Concord cake. And when we opened up on the Upper West Side, I really wanted to, because of my unique connection to this neighborhood, I really wanted to do something that ties back to something that I may be the only person who really remembers, at least from our staff. And we found Madge, and Madge still lives in the neighborhood, and she was so gracious and came and taught us how to make this cake. And in another one of these amazing New York stories, she came into Bread's Bakery at 18 East 16th Street, 
And she walked in, she's like, oh my gosh, you have no, this was my father's flag factory. So her father used to make flags in the right. same space where Bridge Bakery is now. Exactly. She knew the whole neighborhood. She obviously spent a lot of time there. And it's one of those things you can't make up. It's just too amazing. It's too much of a coincidence. And Maura used to work for her too, which kind of brings you full circle. Beautiful at all angles. And I just want to get this, because this is a funny story. You're one of these go-getter kids that, yeah. like, all right, now I'm a manager at Breads. It's great. Love this operation. They're probably going to do a few more stores. Yeah. I'm set for life. I'm staying here. But no, you're going to leave and do what? I'm going to go to graduate school and um, get a dual master's, uh, MBA and a food studies master's. So I've always known I wanted to open my own business. So everything I've done to this point is, you know, building Getting my Getting you skills. ready. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Makes sense. So my idea right now is to buy a piece of land that's, you know, farmable and hopefully I can get some apple trees on there and I want to use the produce to create different products with food and um, make a little cafe on the property and hopefully utilize the products as another kind of like revenue stream. To so if I pick up the paper in seven or eight years from now <laughs> and I open up the New York Times dining section yeah. and there's a whole story. Mm -hmm about this crazy lady who's got all this background, mm -hmm. incredible apple orchard with like indigenous variety apples, mm -hmm. making cider, making hard cider, making brandy, donuts. Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Applesauce. Then that'll be all you. All the apple stuff. That's Yeah, you. that's wacky me for sure. And the concept here is like your concept downtown. I mean, you're baking all day long, fresh all day all long. All day long. All day long. Yeah. Freshness is the key yeah. to this game. That's what we're all about. That's what we brought to the table. We brought freshness. People have been making croissants in the city for a very long time. But to really have one that was baked less than an hour ago, for us to be able to time that, that's really the name of the game. Bingo. Yeah. Action on the stage. Chef, what are you making? First thing. What okay, we're going to do, we do one of this like signature dish. 15 years with me, the Palestinian tartar. You have like a beef or filet, very clean. You know, when you do tartar, you don't want like clean, right. nothing tendons, fat and no anything. Right. Yeah. And we season that a little bit salt. So and filet mignon. Exactly. And then we do like cumin. When I start, a few Palestinian cooks walk for me. And they teach me about all the flavors of the Arabic village around the area I work. And they teach me about the, the tahini and the za'atar and all that. And I said, when I open my own restaurant, I say I want to make a honor for them mm. for that and for all this knowledge. A little smoky? A bit smoky because we use like the flesh of the eggplant that we burn on you open. Burn, you got you. Yeah, and you know, loves you, that. I, you know, we start every morning with three hours, all the stove. Eggplant. Eggplant, eggplant that we burn. It's yeah. get inside 90% of the dishes. When I opened Katit, like my first restaurant in Israel, it was like I was burning this eggplant all over the day. Tons of the, of the, of the skins, burnt skins. I said, I cannot throw all this stuff. And I started to play with that, and that became to be this cream. It's made from the skin of the, of the burn, burning eggplant. And then we, we, we play like a big chef, you know, we do like the, but then it's, it's really simple. Then we put another one, another tree, only like that, because I like the flavor of that in the plate. We start to put this one in a free hand. I don't want like shakes, I don't want to do canals. canals. I want like to be rough, rustic a bit, because that's us, you know, that's the Middle East. And then, of course, you cannot have like Middle East food without yogurt or labane. And then what we're doing now, also we have the pine nuts, we're going... It's spring, so we've got peas in season. Exactly. And then we have the faba. We have like New York thing, you know, like, like the broccolini. And we try to involve in the dishes like things that belong to here. Mm. And we put like chalot ring around it. We have like raw tahini. We play with that here. And we have like the chili. Some heat. Yeah. It already shows like pickled. And then we have the crushed tomatoes that we... Just fresh, peeled, fresh. concasse. And all these flavors, that's the Middle East flavors. Flowers a bit. We have like the shiso, it's not Middle East things, but like, again, like it's a fusion. It's like more than Middle East. Peas. Pea but shoots. this is pea shoot, yeah. Sumac, it's a fruit that is very citrusy. Olive oil, to finish that. And that's our Palestinian tartar. Beautiful, Chef. I think Vivian Netanyahu is going to be like, you've poached enough talent from my country. Stop coming. You're gonna, next time he goes to Israel, <laughs> stop him at, the, at the, the airport, turn him around and send him back to New York. That's right. You brought us Ori, you brought us Meyer, so thanks for coming in. So tell me about you guys, how did this project come together? We have a third partner that 
look for the right connection in the city and we know Gadi did like amazing bakery and that was the right connection for us to, to come to Gadi and say like, let's do something else together also and he heard about the idea and that was the connection. Yeah, that's sort of how it happened. I mean like all good things in my life it was sheer luck and total coincidence. I certainly didn't have any ambition to, to do this. There was a gentleman that uh, was a good friend of mine, his name is Keith Durst and He's referred to in New York circles as the restaurant Yoda. I know he, you know him. He's a good guy. And, and he came and he said, Gadi, you're four blocks away. Come, I've got to show you this restaurant that's like ready to go. Maybe you have some concept you want to put in. And he showed us this beautiful space, and I fell in love with it. But I had no real concept to put in there. Breads is four blocks away. There's no need for another breads. And in that week came this gentleman by the name of Daniel who said, I'm representing Mayor Adoni here in New York. <laughs> And it just came, I said, let's go right now. And the restaurant was still open as another restaurant. We walked in and he called Mayor and he said, this is a perfect place. It looks just like your restaurants in Israel. And we got it all done Can in I a just... matter of weeks. Because <laughs> that's <laughs> the not miracle. supposed to how it works. It's never supposed to just drop in your lap. It just dropped in our lap. We are playing now like the sea bus with the freaky. Freaky is a smoked green wheat. Under that we have like the smoked eggplant cream, a lot of green. And also like again like the tahini and the yogurt and the parsley and the greens and you have all these flavors together. Okay, what listen, this is special. Sashimi grouper glazed with the juice that we collect from the roasted eggplant. You have like Thai basil, kaffir lime on that. You have like gel of dashi, yuzo and white soy sauce. That's what's on the top. And you have ravioli that made from Celery roots. Peeled yeah. and then on a mandolin. On a mandolin, and then, then you blanch, we blanch it, then yeah. like lemon juice, olive oil, you sit like two hours like that, and then we dry it, and then the stuffing is like tomato confit, flesh of eggplant, crushed almonds, and you have like green curry oil, and that's go out. It's beautiful. Go, go, go. Thank you. The menu here is interesting. You're kind of grabbing from all over, and I guess part of that's your background. Your mom's Moroccan? Yes, my, my mother. From Meknes. Yeah, Meknes. She was born in Meknes and I raised on this food. And, but, like, but only on a, not that. Like, it's also like Israel is like 69 years old country and we immigrate country also. Like, I think like that, this, this city, like New York. And we had Jewish that came after the Holocaust from all over the world to build the country and also brought with them so many different right. cultures. Right. We try to create our own language. You cannot say about almost anything Israeli food in a way that is really real, except of the Jewish food. And it's also not uh, Israeli because it can be Romanian, it can be like... You can have Ashkenazi, yeah. Sephardic, Polish, yeah. right. You have all those traditions. Those. Yes. Yeah. And now I think there is a group of chefs that, that I belong to them that try to create the new language of the Middle East. And, and what we brought here to New York, to Noor, is that language is like to take inspiration from all over around and, and to play with that in a different way and to put the things in the plate in a way that re represent the region. And then we start with that, carrot cream that make with turmeric and cumin vinegar inside. And then we have like cardamom yogurt. That's the cream of the Middle East. Mm. And then we have also like the habanero and a lot of spices also inside, you have to taste it like that. It's like a citrusy taste there and a lot of also again like turmeric and we put the carrots, we play with them, also cook confit and then the octopus. All right, Spanish octopus, you braise it first. Yeah, what we're doing actually, it's come really salty. We give it one time from cold water to Ooh, boil, boil pull the salt to take out. the salt. Then we put it like in olive oil leeks and garlic, bay leaves, and Low then confit. like confit. Got it. Really building with layers I and like, layers of flavor and texture. And then we have like, again, like I like to, I like to put a lot of blossoms around my food. Yeah, it gives and it you have like herbaceous and, quality. And you have like the fennel flowers that the anise taste, like arak, the traditional liquor right. from yep. the alcohol from the Middle East is like... So it's that fennel flavor. Wow, listen, as a Jewish boy, the cutting in eight days old, you know. Yes. You know the cutting? It's a there, is a, there is a cutting. It's a breast. There's a moil. And then, and then when you start to screaming, they put you like arak in your mouth. <laughs> and then that, that's it, you go to sleep. Is that true? Yeah, listen, Moroccan, I Moroccan do it like that. Yeah, and it's like, that's the way, you know? So you associate extreme pain with arak. Yeah, exactly. Ouch. Sunny boy. 
Beautiful, colorful, man. It's like we're beginning to see this theme, right? That's it, you know? This is your signature. It's amazing. But in the end, and it's it all works. Harmony. Here. It all works. Exactly. Exactly. That's so good. That's so good. It's called the Coral Park Swizzle. Which place called Coral Park? C L O R E. Okay. Yeah. How did you get that name? Um, it actually comes from a very famous park in Tel Aviv. Ah, that's why I don't know it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with some uh, mint on the bottom of the glass. Cold glass. Yeah, ice glass. Yes. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do an ounce of grapefruit juice, freshly like, squeezed. Yeah, it looks like freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. Half an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. It's going to be a very refreshing, bright on the palate cocktail. Then I'm gonna go with a little bit of orgeat, which is almond syrup, mm -hmm. about half an ounce of that. Add in some Oni's rum, which is a uh, local rum from uh, New York. White rum. Yeah, absolutely. Give it a little swizzle. Crushed ice. So we're gonna add about 10 dashes of a rock. So which Iraq, is this, uh, right, talk about Iraq, because you actually have an Iraq list on the back of yeah, the menu. Yeah, yeah, Iraq is uh, kind of like a Middle Eastern spirit. Uh, it's uh, distilled from grape. Um, from grape. Also, yeah, from okay. grape. And then it is also uh, distilled with anise. You know, a little bit of fennel, a little bit of licorice. And then we're going to add some Pechard's bitters. Classic New Orleans. Yeah, it's, a, it's another very licorice-y, anise, fennel flavored uh, bitter. Then we're going to add some more crushed ice on top. Burnt lemon powder that we're going to add on top for a little bit of uh, aromatics. Go ahead and smack the mint. There we have the... Uh, Four parts with Oh man. That's delicious. That really is yeah. embarrassingly good. Yeah. That works. Panapuri scallop ceviche. And then we squeeze inside a yogurt and use a foam. Like, see how sexy is that? Huh? I want to spoil it. Thank today. you. You're doing you know, it. You're like doing and, it. And, and give like a big bite inside. It's going in my mouth. It's like one. This is like one bite. This right. Is, this is like eating I want an to see that. I want to see that. And let it, let it, let it broken and let it move. Let it move. Let it move. There is, there is life there. There is life there. Beautiful. Huh? Beautiful. Lisa. Congratulations. So EMP, you've got this killer resume. I mean, some of the sketches in the city. You're here now. How much fun is this for you? This is amazing. Like a whole new challenge. Absolutely amazing. Whole new challenge. Whole new chef. Whole new ingredients. This is actually why I decided to work for Mayor. I have here is a pistachio tahini. This anchors the product. So it basically, Pistachio tahini. this is an almond crumble and it's uh, colored with red zinc, all natural. Here we have chocolate cardamom stones. By, uh, the stones represent the path, the rocks, the desert. We take our masica and glaze, our lightly poached apples, and then our flowers represent like, you know, like as if it was a natural path. And we paint this with gold dust because Jerusalem is the city of gold. Yeah, once again, tons of color, tons of texture, tons of flavor, all kinds of, you know, mixing sweet and savory and... Mm -hmm. So then we add the onion dust. Now this crazy onion dust. Which gives it this, like, all-natural black. Again, absolutely no food coloring in the house at all. And then the last product that goes on there is a smoked yogurt ice cream. And there you are. Beautiful. The Hills of Jerusalem. Super unusual. And this is exactly... It's like not sweet. I mean, it's just sweet enough that you know it's dessert. Dessert. But it's not a hit it in your face over no. the top sugar, which is what I love. Couscous of the Migrash Abeiti. In Tel Aviv, you're like a household name. In Israel, you're a household name. At one point, you had four restaurants, two TV shows. You're like the guy. Yes, you know, I don't like to say it on myself, but you know, it's, it's, it's not so quick, you know, I'm like 22 years in this occupation. In this was there, so a cooking school, or is there, is, is there, there must be a culinary school in Of course, Israel. yes, of course. We, I did did like, you have to do that? Did you do that? There? I did one year, after, after I finished my military service, I did one year. And, I know militaries, I didn't even ask, because that's a given. Yeah, you, are, you have to do it. Then I moved to Cordon Bleu in Australia, then I moved like to Notre Dame, Paris. But I tell you the truth, I learned from my cool. mother and my grandmother. Wow things that you never learn in school. And then you come back to your, your world and you go back and you research your roots and you say, I'm a Radon, who I am? What I want to cook to the world that I will leave a signature of something that belongs to me. Eggnog Carpaccio. The flavors that we're going to put here, it's like I think every kid in Israel knows. 
because it represents the way we're eating eggplant. And again, it's like the smoked eggplant that we burn in open flame. Then we take the skin out, we cut the eggplant nicely, and then we put between two parchment paper with a bit of oil, and then we squeeze it. And That's then, how you get the shape. And then, like, yeah, with the ring, we do the, the, the shape of the round shape. We start with salt, a little bit salt, sea salt all the time. And then we have like the black pepper, we're seasoning a little bit with black pepper, maybe a little bit more. And then we put the coriander seeds, a little bit crushed, roughly crushed. You think I create flavor? Yeah, I, that's, that's kind of also my, in Israel, my signature thing. People eating almost every dish they have like yeah, coriander once you, seeds. Yeah, once you crack coriander seeds the first time, you're like, whoa, yeah, I love this flavor. Completely. And now we're going to run with, again, raw tahini. I mean, go like a spiral way of pre presentation. And then we do the same thing with silan. That's the dates on it. And also the dates coming from Israel is an unbelievable one. And the tahini and the dates together give you like the halva flavor. Like it's the sweets from the region. Yep. And you know, it's really exciting in the mouth. And then we put like a little bit fresh thyme. Tell me about this plate, this is aluminum? Yeah, yeah, we actually brought them from Israel. Like uh, typical style of? Yeah, I, get, I go there to someone that produced them. I did like few shapes, few styles. And you say, you know, we want to bring our own culture and to yeah. be unique. I think that's part, yeah, unusual. That's that part is. of unusual. that. And then we have here like, we have like pistachio, roasted pistachio. We take like a feta cheese, the saltiness, and make it like we threw the cheese through a sieve, and you get like a powder, and then we're doing we, big tanny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we play with that a bit, and that's the saltiness of the cheese above that garlic chive blossom. We spread it here, and then we have the basil. Yeah, it's funny. Everyone cuts off the basil blossoms and throws them out. I'm like, did you ever taste them? They're delicious. They're amazing. And then in the end, we finish the dish with rose water and olive oil. Can you throw us a bagel, please? Talk, before we mangle this, talk to me about this, because you have this, not surprisingly with Gotti involved, and you involved, yeah. there's this great bread program here. You have stuff I've never seen, what is this? This is like a Jerusalem bagel. If you're walking in Jerusalem streets, right. you're going to see Arabic persons go with that by, by wood trucks, by, by hand, and they're selling that za'atar next to that, and you can find it everywhere in Jerusalem. It's very unique to Jerusalem. And you know, like sesame around. And I said, you know, if we open a restaurant that bring the Middle East, this bread has to this. be there. And we have the luck that we have like a bakery partner that can bake us for, the, for us. Yeah, this is and, amazing. Yeah, so this is like the perfect and that's the perfect delivery. Vehicle. Yeah, in, in the Middle East, you eat by hand. You eat by hand, you know, that's exactly, exactly. That's the right, ah, I see you know what you're doing. Mm. Mm. And you feel the rose water there? It's like, well, I say it's like a halva. There's so much flavor in this, it's crazy. I mean, it's just like, it's like loaded with layers and layers and layers from the smokiness of the eggplant, the herbs, the halva, that, that crazy honey. With Holy the tahini, shit. with everything, listen. No, no, I want to go directly to your mouth. Yeah, that's the way to eat, you know? That's, that's food that makes food with love, you know? And feel how you- That's the first. Yeah. That's the first, that's the first. You've been busy, busy. You opened five months late, unfortunately. Five months late. But middle of the spring, and you're pretty much packed every night now. Pretty much. We're blessed to knock on wood and all of that. Uh, Mayor's not comfortable saying it about himself, but he is the guy in Israel. And in Israel, he could open up a restaurant with 500 seats and fill it up every night. But we opted to do something really, really small and give people this really unique intimate experience with a very big chef, which is not something that you really get to do a lot in New York. And, and so we're excited to be able and to the, do and, that. And I mean, kudos to you, bro. You have four kids and you're basically, because I know I had to book this damn shoot. <laughs> you're here two weeks, gone two weeks, here two weeks, gone two yeah. weeks. That's what you're doing. Two weeks in Tel Aviv, two weeks, two weeks in New York in City. That's right. Yep. Where line do you fly? <laughs> <laughs> I want some of your frequent flyer miles on. Yeah, but listen, yeah, that's, that's life. My kids also know that that's, the biggest dream of, of the father of them, and they really support me. It's not easy for them also, but you know, I said they prefer to have a happy father that doing something good in his life than to have upset father at home all the time.
Well, that smells so good coming across. You smell that, you smell the saffron. Okay, and then what we said, that's the stock, like the boya bears and the arisa and everything together. And now we have the potatoes there. And we have the chickpeas, the potatoes like the French thing. And the, and the chickpeas is like the Moroccan thing. And you put everything and then we have like the poached fish there, cooked perfectly. What's the fish? What kind of fish? The fish we work with the black bass. Oh, that's like one of my favorites. And what you can see here, we decide to serve very traditional Jewish things, again with mussels. Mm. You know, my mother, she wants to suicide when she says, Sis, show me serving like mussels in, a, in like a traditional grandmother dish. But I say, listen, we are 2017, New York. Let's play a bit with the rules. You know, we are Jewish, but we are like flexible. Okay. And now, you know, by hand, everything by hand. Uh, All right, we got our little sandwichy thing. And now you can take another, like, a little bit from the Arak, and it's close the story. Let's say Lechaim. Lechaim. And thank you very much that you are here. No, thanks for coming to New York. It's great to have you, all of you. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Come. Yeah, the Arak. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we have to eat from that. You know, fish stew like Ooh. that, with that, and with challah, it's crazy. <laughs> Magnus, Marrakesh, you know, that, that's the story of, of the, the, the region. Oh. You know, that's the story of the region. That's killer, man. Killer, thank you, Chef. Thank you, thank it's you. Pleasure, pleasure to have you. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home.